Hello class and welcome to Math Minutes, video lesson number 46 on absolute value. You can follow along the video if you turn to your notebook three on page six. So let's get started on absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. Absolute value is always positive because it is impossible to measure distance as a negative. That will make sense if you just think about that a little bit. Any distance will have to be a positive number. Absolute value notation uses straight lines before and after the number or expression like this. Two solid straight lines. And here's another example, x plus 8, the absolute value of x plus 8. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So let's look at what that means on a number line. How can these both have the same answer? Well, if we just claim this little middle spot here to be 0 on a number line, we know that this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Let's look at what this first one is telling us. What is the absolute value of 5? Well, let's find 5 on the number line. It's right here. What is the absolute value of 5? What is the distance, right? It is the distance from 0. How far away is 5 from 0? Well, it's 5 places away. Well, let's look at the absolute value of negative 5. Well, here's negative 5, negative 5. It also is 5 places away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So what if we have an absolute value of an unknown? For example, x equals 7. Well. There will be a positive value for x and a negative value for x. In this example, x could equal negative 7 and 7 because both negative 7 and 7 are each 7 units away from 0. Let's take a look at that on a number line. Um, here we have our 0. And what could x be? Well, if x equals 7, it could be 7 away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Positive 7 is 7 away from 0, but also negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 7 is also 7 away from 0. So let's take a look on the next page and practice understanding absolute value. What is the absolute value of negative 10? How many places away from 0 is it? Well, it's 10 places away. What is the absolute value of 42? Well, it is 42 places away from 0. What is the absolute value of negative 531? It is 531 because it's 531 places away from 0. Now that's pretty straightforward, but what if there's an expression within the absolute value? How do we solve this type? Solve this type of absolute value two times. So we have the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 9. So the first time we do it, we're simply going to remove the absolute value markings and make it x plus 3 equals 9. For the second problem, we're also going to remove the absolute value parallel lines, but we're going to make it equal negative 9. And we're going to solve it two times. So x in this case, what would we do? We would subtract 3 from both sides, so we would get x equals 9 minus 3 is 6. Well, in this case, what are we going to do? We're also going to minus 3, so we get and minus 3 from this side, so we get x equals negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12. We have two answers. x can equal 6, and it could also equal negative 12. How is that possible? Well, let's take a look at checking to make sure how this is possible and did we do this right. 
So we're going to substitute the values for x. So we got one value for x to be 6. So let's substitute that in right here. So absolute value of 6 plus 3 equals 9. And let's see if that's true. 6 plus 3 is 9. Is the absolute value of 9 9? Yes. Well, it works for that one. How about this one? We also think x could be negative 12. Well, now let's substitute negative 12 into this x. Absolute value, negative 12 plus 3 equals 9. Is this true? Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. Is the absolute value of negative 9 9? Yes because negative nine is also nine places away from zero. So let's turn to page eight and just do a little more practice. So remember, we're gonna do each problem two times. So let's set it up. The first one, we're gonna make it, oops, what do we do? We don't use the absolute value mark. We're just gonna write it. We're gonna say X minus four equals six. We're also going to make it x minus 4 equals negative 6. Let's solve them. Uh, we're going to add 4 to this one, so it's going to be x equals 10. And we're going to add 4 to this one also, adding 4 here. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So x can be, x can equal negative 2 and 10. Let's take a look at number two. Set it up two times. 12 minus x equals six, and 12 minus x equals negative six. What are we gonna do for this one? We're gonna minus 12 on each side. We get negative x equals six minus 12 is negative six. Do you remember you recall, whenever you end up with a negative x or negative y, um, you simply multiply both sides by a negative one and that all your signs will flip to opposite because a negative times a negative is positive. But if I do it on this side, I also have to do it on this side. So X equals six. Well, that's one value for X. How about the next one? Well, we're also going to subtract six or 12 on this side. So we get negative X equals this time we have negative six minus 12 gives us a negative 18. And again, we're just gonna flip the signs and make it 18. So in this problem, x can equal six and 18. This one has one little um, additional step now. We have something on the outside of the uh, parenthesis or the absolute value. So what we need to do first is we need to isolate just the absolute value portion of this equation. How do we do that? We're going to add five to both sides. So now we have absolute value X plus three equals 20 plus five is 25. Now we can set up our problem and solve two times x plus 3 equals 25, and x plus 3 equals negative 25. Let's look at our first one. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We get x equals 25 minus 3 is 22. Second problem, again, minus 3 from both sides to get x by itself. Negative 25 minus 3 is negative 28. Let's take a look and check this one. We have two values for x. So let's substitute that in to the original problem. Let's take our first one, x equals 22. So that's going to be what? It's going to be 22 plus 3, absolute value of that, minus 5 equals 20. 22 plus 3 is 25 minus five equals 20. What is the absolute value of 25? 25 minus five, does that equal 20? It does indeed. So that one checks out. 
let's check negative 28 because that one might look like, I don't know, that, that one might not be so clear. Well, let's check it out. X is negative 28 plus 3 minus 5 equals 20. And we can add, we can add the 5 this time. So let's make that negative 28 plus 3 and add 5 would be 25. Negative 28 plus 3 is negative 25. And does the absolute value of negative 25 equal 25? Yes. So just to review, what did we have to do first? We had to move that so that we get the absolute value isolated. Let's take a look at this one. Same thing's going to happen. We have um, uh, an absolute value, but we have it being multiplied by negative 3. So how would we get rid of something? When two things are being multiplied together, we undo them by doing the opposite, which is division. We're going to divide by negative 3, and that would cancel. But we also have to divide this side by negative 3. So what do we get? We get the absolute value of 4 equals, what is negative 12 divided by negative 3 will be a positive 4. Okay, so number four didn't have a variable in it, but that's just a little example on how you would treat an absolute value that has something being multiplied in front of it. Uh, you'd want to simplify it just like a regular problem. So if we take a look at the last one, this one also has something different in it. It is not an equation, but it is an inequality. So we have a little detail that we have to make sure that we understand on this one. So let's take a look at number five. The absolute value is already isolated. Uh, so we're still going to set it up twice uh, without the absolute value. So we have x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 4. Now our second one that we're going to set up is also going to be x plus 1, but it's going to be less than or equal to negative 4. Because any time you multiply an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality has to flip. So greater than becomes less than and less than will become greater than. Now we can solve this two times. What are we going to do? Subtract one from both sides. X is greater than or equal to three. Also subtracting one from both sides, X is less than or equal to negative five because negative four minus one is negative five. And there you have it, an introduction on how to handle absolute value, which is the distance a number or a unit is away from zero. And the little factoid with that is absolute value answers uh, will always be positive. Good luck with your homework. I'll see you in class.